Meteorologist Ed Shimon is back with me this morning to walk us through the damage surveys conducted by the National Weather Service in Central Illinois. Ed, good morning. Good morning, Lauren. Right, although not entirely unheard of, but the February 28th event Tuesday was pretty rare, and part of your job is to go out in the field after the fact, after the storms are long out of here, and conduct damage surveys. Where did you guys go, and what exactly did you do? Uh, we started off in the Washburn area because that was the primary report we had, uh, major damage. And uh, we snap photographs with our uh, iPad and we have software on there that will allow us to put in the damage that occurred and give us a range of wind speeds that will give us an idea of what the EF rating might be. I still am trying to wrap my head around how in the world you can tell how fast the winds were blowing just by looking at the damage. Right, yeah, we, we rely on the research that's been done by engineering uh, companies and uh, provide us with a, a range of possibilities for what wind speeds are needed to actually damage homes that, are, uh, that we were observing. We're looking at air drone footage now of the Washburn tornado. Explain to us what you saw that morning you were in the field. There was extensive damage throughout that area. This was one significant tornado, uh, especially for a February time frame. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, structures were, were, one of them completely blown away, which, uh, which was unusual that we rated an EF3. Um, and then many homes lost their roofs, which is a, another significant tornado. Was there damage. anything you saw that kind of made you a little emotional or anything that was surprising? Right, yeah. When, when you're talking, we try and talk to the homeowner and see where they home, how do they get the warning, and, you know, and how did they, they, save, you know, they save themselves. And one gentleman was actually watching your show um, and took cover. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the people that are helping out, there's just, it's kind of a, a, a dull, you know, you just, it, it is emotional because the people there have been through a tremendous tr turmoil. And, uh, you know, we try to acknowledge that while we're trying to gather the information and be sensitive to that. How can you tell if the damage was caused by a tornado or just by wind gusts, straight line winds? Uh, the tornadoes actually are suction vortices, so they'll draw the damage toward the central point of their path, whereas downburst winds will fan out the damage uh, from the central point and, and create a fanning motion. I have more videos, or actually these are pictures behind me of the Washburn tornado that our Alyssa Paldo took when she was out reporting in the field. Just incredible. I see roofs blown off. This house behind me, Ed, is just completely gone, definitely uninhabitable. And these are just some of the images you saw yourself when you were out there on right. Wednesday. Once you get back to the office, what do you do with all the information? We put it into the, uh, the system uh, it, in GIS format, uh, which is utilized by multiple agencies. The Storm Prediction Center will use it. The National Dynamic Climatic Data Center will use it. And uh, we'll compile the information, not only for them, but for also the public and the media. Uh, we'll have a website that will be interactive. You can click on the, the uh, points along the path of the storm and see images that I took. Um, and you'll be able to see exactly what occurred throughout that entire tornado path. Just very fascinating but scary stuff. Ed, thank you so much for coming back in this morning. I'm going to post this interview in case you missed it on our website, ciproud.com. We'll be right back.